Alright guys, we're going to go over a little bit of video here on how to advance your, if you have a case that you need to, retard your timing on your blaster by doing it yourself. Uh, it's actually not too difficult as long as you have some of the crucial tools to do it. I've already uh, tore it apart, so I'm just going to go through it uh, the easy way. You'll probably have a little bit more trouble than myself since I've already got it apart. Uh, you have the flywheel nut when you take the cover off. It's a 17 millimeter nut. You'll want to unscrew that. The problem you'll run into is is that the flywheel will move. Uh, it'll rotate when you're trying to pull that. That's what these two holes are for. Is uh, Yamaha sells a flywheel uh, flywheel holder that you will hold on to the end of the handle there while you uh, unscrew the nut there. Uh, if you don't have one you can make one pretty easily. I couldn't find the one I made a couple weeks ago so I made one real quick. No joke, out of OSB and a couple of drill holes. I drilled a couple holes and put some bolts through it. Uh, the only thing you're going to watch when you do that is that they, the, the bolts that you put in, if you do something like that, that they don't go in very far because you'll hit the stator, the stator plate behind it. So you just want to watch out when you do that. Anyways, You'll take that nut off, and the one tool you are going to need is this guy. This will pull the flywheel off after you get the nut off. It doesn't just pop off after you get the nut off. How this works is, after you get this washer out, i got it kind of stuck in there. But this will thread in reverse, so lefty-tighty. And then this is 17 millimeter on the outside, just like the flywheel nut. What this will do is this will screw in. And you'll want to put a wrench here. And then I used a socket back here. And you'll want to tighten it. You want to watch yourself. Uh, it doesn't, sometimes it'll just loosen up. Other times it'll pop off. Uh, if you're having troubles and it doesn't seem like it's coming off, just unthread it out. And then see if it's loose you'll notice that it'll have some play to it that's when it's loose enough to take off now taking it off it'll just slide right off the magnets here holding it to the stator plate Get that. Yep. and there's your flywheel sorry about that uh, looking at this actually one thing you'll want to check is to make sure these magnets inside they're not dirty or anything you can wipe it down real quick with a rag or anything to clean them up put that off to the side I actually don't have this screwed in right now because I'm just trying to show you real quick um, now when you take the flywheel off it's important that you got a clean area here as you can probably see this little guy right here this is your woodruff key it's very important that you do not lose this if you lose this your engines probably not gonna run too well so where did that pop out out of in a lot of cases it'll pop off when you get the flywheel off it goes in this little slot right here and when you put it in it sits in that slot like this the flat end up so set that off to the side where you won't lose it I'm just gonna set it here for now then you'll have your uh, stator plate in here I will put it on here tight enough to where it'll what it looks like when you actually will see it when you take everything off it'll sit in there approximately like that the only thing holding it is uh, this screw here and the screw down here all right now before you take anything off when you want to advance the timing you need to make a mark beforehand knowing where you were at before you changed anything because if you just start moving around you're not gonna know where you're going or where you were before so what I did is I just took a sharpened end of a flat screwdriver and made a mark in here on the edge. It's difficult to see. 
but I will do my best to illuminate it. And kind of see there, it's kind of hard, the camera's not the best. But you want to make a mark somewhere in here on the plate and on the side of the case here that illustrates where you were at before you started. Now once you do this, you can just unscrew these real quick. They're already loose for me. But if you have any issues with them, you can kind of just tap them a little bit and they'll come off. Make sure you use a uh, P3 screwdriver, a big screwdriver. That's pretty important to do that because you don't want to strip them out. You can always get some more at the hardware store if that would happen, but it just saves you some time not to strip them out in the first place. Alright. Now from here you just have your little rubber part that pops off. And it kind of sits in a groove so it might be a little tight in there, but it'll just plop right off. From here you got the cord and everything. It'll fall out. And what you're looking at is your plate now. And what you should see is a little mark. I've already marked mine. As you can see, maybe, I've got zero and then I've got the little tick marks in between and five. Now this is in degrees. Why? Well, the flywheel spins in the circle. It rotates 360 degrees when it goes around. So, what we're looking for is to advance the timing. To advance the timing, when you have the plate in its stock position, it'll sit in that groove about there. Now to advance, we want to move it clockwise. Rotate clockwise. Make sure you don't get confused and do it backwards because you'll be retarding the timing then unless you're trying that for a specific application. Most people always advance. Um, now when you make these tick marks, you're probably wondering how do you come about doing them. Some people uh, will measure them out in millimeters. I personally don't like it. I uh, The easiest way to do it, no joke, I'm not kidding. You just print it off. It's four and a half inches. 360 degree protractor. This was the first one that popped up when I got on Google and it's actually pretty nice. And if you can see that, it's actually pretty exact. You want to print it off with some pretty high quality. That way you can see exactly where the degree marks are. So, from there it's pretty straightforward. Plop this down. And let me get it on there first. As you can see, the stator plate's underneath. But it's the same size. And you don't need 360 degree protractor. 180 will work fine too, it doesn't matter. Well, all you really need to do is make sure you got this lined up on the circumference. Let me line it up here for you. That's pretty close. Now, when you got this uh, protractor kind of lined up with the edge of the the edge of the stator plate here, where you got the same gap pretty much all the way around, you you can see where you're starting. It's easier just to start from zero, just as a frame of reference. It doesn't really matter. But zero degrees is where your timing was before. Now, what do you want to do? You want to advance your timing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight however many degrees farther. So you want to mark the tabs where the individual degrees are at. I am advancing mine five degrees so I have that tick mark at five degrees. As you can see right there it's right at five degrees. I used a pencil a very fine tip sharpie will work too. Uh, whatever works for you. You can even take a scribe like YFS did when he originally uh, made the post for it and then I marked it out with my plus five for the largest point and zero for the stock timing just to know where I'm at. Then the question is what do you do after that? Well you put it all back together but if you're going 
even for plus four degrees, which is common for the blaster, or plus five, sometimes you run into an issue with uh, this little tab here. Let me get it on there first. And what you'll see is that tab will sometimes hit this case. It's uh, it's really close on there, so you might have to grind that down too. So, if you grind that down, it'll be able to rotate farther clockwise. Then from there, you just gotta widen the screw holes with a Dremel or a file or whatever you got. A Dremel's easiest. But you wanna rotate the screw holes so they match up, and it'll allow you to rotate this. It's pretty uh, straightforward from there. So, slap that back on there. And that is all you have to do in order to advance the timing. You put it back, uh, use some Loctite, make sure nothing vibrates loose. But the biggest thing not to forget is the Woodruff key. People forget it all the time. And I'll, take, I'll actually take this back out just to show you so you can see it better. Here is the water key. There's a little slot it goes into. It just sits in there. The round end goes in first. And it sits flat. Just like that. And also, on your flywheel, you'll notice that you got a little slot for the woodruff key. That's there for a purpose. It sits over it. As you can see, it's white on the inside. So when you put this on, it kind of helps to put it at 12 o'clock, the crank. And then when you put the flywheel back on, you can just put the flywheel on over it at about 12 o'clock. And just kind of get on your knees and make sure it slides right in over that uh, woodruff key and you don't have any issues. Other than that, uh, you should see for blasters, depends on your mods, but probably about 1.5, 2.5 horsepower over the whole curve and for the torque specs for the flywheel nut which is also very important you'll want to tighten that back down to 53 foot pounds